How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this kind of retro style text animation. We're gonna be dealing with some fun fonts, some blooping textures, and some really cool stuff along the way. Now really quickly, I wanna let you guys know that the free version of the real-time materials add-on is now available on Blender Market. You get 40 totally free, really high quality procedural materials with that free add-on. You can get it in the description right now. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into the tutorial. All right. So we are here in Blender. Uh, let's go ahead and hit Shift A and we're gonna get some text. Um, right over here, hit this little green text icon and we're gonna center out both of these things. To edit your text, you'll hit Tab and I'm gonna type in Blend. Have some fun there. Now, we need to go to the font section. And for this, any kind of retro font will work. Um, really, the, it's the animation, the frame rate, and the weird stuff we're gonna do later that's gonna make it look very retro. But one of the most important things for this design is the font. So look up like best retro fonts, something like that. There are tons and tons on the internet. I'm gonna go ahead and get mine. So the font I'm using is Moderna Regular. And then that one's totally free on the internet. So we'll go ahead and use that. And now we have it. Let's go ahead and go to the geometry section. And then I'm going to extrude it. Just keep it nice and square. Um, not too thick, but definitely not too thin. And then what we need to do here is round these corners. That's really gonna sell the effect we're gonna add to it later. So that's gonna be with these depths. Uh, we're beveling. Uh, but you can see how crazy that looks. And it's touching, we don't want that. So we can scroll down on spacing and fix your character spacing. And um, I got a complaint on my last tutorial about kerning, which that's what this is called, kerning. So we're doing, we'll do a little bit better on the kerning today. This font is uh, pretty solid. Uh, so with that being said, you know, we have little artifacts, weirdness like this, but once we add everything, it will be close to unnoticeable. So now that we have this, we can start uh, the shading process. Let's click on this little camera icon and I'm gonna go here to Eevee and then make sure you have Bloom on for this. So with that being said, let's click on shading. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key. I'm gonna click top. And then uh, we're just gonna go to the main render settings on the world right here. Bring that down to black. All right, so let's click new and then let's delete the principled, get a mix shader. Always make that mistake. There we go, we're back. <laughs> mix shader. And then we'll get two emission materials. We'll get a white, and let's just give this one a color so we can see the difference. So let's plug that one into the shader, that one into the shader, and then let's bring the factor over to you can only see the one here with color. We're gonna go ahead and put a color ramp into it so we can add multiple colors to this emission. Let's get a noise texture and hit Control T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. It comes with Blender by default. Plug that into the object, plug factor into the color ramp, and we're gonna see some detail. If you bring this in, you're gonna start seeing that detail. Um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add uh, pure RGB colors. So right here, click this plus icon. On the black one here, you'll see these sliders. Just slide that over, pure R or pure red, and then we'll do pure green, and then we'll also do a pure blue. All right, and then we'll crunch these two in and have a little bit of fun with that. Let's bring that detail to zero and then you can bring that scale down if you want. Um, but these, see how hard this edge is? It's soft, but not that good looking. So we're gonna go from linear to B spline and that really softens everything up. This is exactly what we're looking for. Now on the noise texture, let's go to 4D so that we can actually animate this. This is how we're gonna be animating it. And then let's go ahead and bring that emission up so it glows a little bit, so that'll fade out some of these colors and we can bring saturation back in in post. All right, now we need to deal with the white. So the way we're gonna do that is get a color ramp and the white node is why we beveled the edges really harshly. So put that color into the factor. We're gonna go ahead and get in a layer weight node and use facing. So once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and we need to flip the color ramp. And then now with this blend, we can add this white edge and then bring up the, the brightness a little bit. Now we have this white edge around the scene, something like this. 
So you can just kind of tweak it a little bit. But basically, notice it with no layer weight, see how it looks. If we implement some layer weight, it's gonna exaggerate the corners there, the edges, and that is what really is gonna give it that kind of retro feel as well. Not having it flat, but having it very obviously three-dimensional. Um, very, very kind of older style. You don't see this very much nowadays. Um, now that we have this, we might as well just animate it. So I'm gonna go hit this little button here. So I brought up a new window, hit the button, we'll go to a timeline, and we're gonna keep it at 250 frames. And then here on the preferences, keep your default interpolation at linear. Go to the animation tab, default interpolation, make it linear. So let's see, how much do we need to do this? So let's go ahead, keep it at frame one. We're gonna do a boomerang instead of like, like doing a really good loop because this is going to be five frames a second it won't really matter. Uh, so let's go ahead and make that five frames a second really quick. So on the printer icon, go from 24 frames a second to custom, five. All right, cool. And that's gonna make it look kind of stop motion, again, adding to that retro feel. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and do that. So hover over the W, hit I, go to the very end, I'm gonna click on that, and then hit I again. And then right here in the middle, somewhere around here, let's go ahead and use, so, you know, put your W as much as you want. And then that's not, not the greatest. So we'll put it back here to the middle and make it far more. Now my memory served me wrong. We're actually need to be at 10 frames a second. There we go, that's a lot better. So now we have this kind of stop motion look it's very like it just doesn't look very smooth it's kind of jittery it's kind of weird and that's really going to add to that retro feel so now we've done that portion let's just go ahead and give this guy a background so I'll get a plane and then i'm going to scale it up um let's hit the tilde key and go to the top let's go ahead and add our camera we need to get that going bring that up hit zero to go to the, the camera view i'm going to hit g to center that out so bring it up like this control a apply that scale, and I'm gonna hit tab, right click, subdivide, and then let's see, I think 15, maybe 20, that ought to look really good. And then uh, maybe we can scale this down a little bit, like that. And then I want this to be behind it. There we go. So now we have this, we're gonna go ahead and add a wireframe. So let's hold, first off hit Control A and apply that scale, can't remember if I did that. Let's go ahead and add a wireframe modifier and then bring that down. We're just gonna add an emission material with a gradient to really sell. Again, we're going for retro. Retro loves these kind of grids and stuff like that. So we really wanna, wanna kind of go after that and then keep it within this. All right, now let's go ahead and add that material and we'll be done. So let's click new, making sure that plane is selected. I'm gonna hit the period key to bring this up. Let's go ahead and get that um, emission node, plug that to the surface, boom. Now we got this, definitely wanna make it thinner. There we go, I like that. We can bring this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and get a color ramp and we're gonna keep the color white so the color ramp doesn't need to change and we'll get in a gradient texture. Hit control T, we're definitely gonna need this mapping and texture coordinate and then plug the color here. Gradient is working, but we need to go here to spherical and then from linear to B spline. And then we can just kind of bring that in. Notice how nice that fade is. And then right here, I'm going to click and drag and we're going to scale up that gradient until it kind of fits. And if you want to, which one would it be? You can actually squash, make it more of an oval. And then we can go ahead and make this brighter if we want. Um, but maybe, maybe not, we don't really need to. Um, but yeah, and you can change the location of this if you want, which I wanna bring it up a little bit. And there we have it. We have our animation, but we do need to add some compositing to really kind of sell this effect. And I'm gonna bring the camera out a little bit. So if we press play, it looks like this. Um, definitely want it to be glowing a little bit more. Let's see if we can do that in the EV settings. So intensity, we can bring up that glowing intensity. 
You could play with your radius if you'd like, um, but so far this is looking really good. What we're gonna do now is render one frame, just like that. And then we're gonna go here to compositing and finish this off. So shift A, get a viewer. So plug this into the viewer and then I, let's go ahead, hold down shift, right click so that everything goes into the animation. So first thing we need to do is add a lens distortion node and that's gonna give us some noise. So, for, what, so first thing we need to do is click on jitter and then bring that dispersion up and you can notice there is this um, noise that's now been added to the scene. So now we have some noise, which is really what we're going for. And then let's go ahead and get a hue saturation node, hue saturation value. My air conditioner just turned on in case you can hear that. Uh, and then we can just bring that saturation Bring that saturation up till it starts to kind of clip. And by clipping, I mean like look really ugly right there. Just bring that down. So now you can preserve some of that color. We still get some of this craziness. And then uh, you can click fit if you want, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, but with that being said, that is, that's our animation. Let me show you how to export this and we'll be totally finished. So let's go here to the printer icon. Keep it at 1080 if you'd like, or you can kind of change it to whatever you want. Um, this shouldn't crash, this is a pretty stable um, process, so we can actually go ahead and go to FFmpeg video, encoding to uh, MP4, output quality, perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and when you're done, you're gonna have a really cool retro style animation. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna check out the free real-time materials add-on, you can get it, 40 free materials, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. And my uh, my cat decided to jump in the video at the last minute. <laughs> but yeah, see you guys in the next tutorial.